What's up, guys? It's Electric E. Today, we're going to do something super cool. We're back to a reaction video, but today I am reacting to a movie. Um, it's a film called Aquila and the Bee. It was released in 2006, but a week ago was my first time watching it. So I'm so, so happy I decided to click on it. For some reason, it was free on YouTube. Um, I think it shouldn't be free because it's fantastic, but I did, it did tempt me to watch it because I didn't have to pay money. So, um, you know, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Um, but I was really a fan of this movie. Like when I first started watching it in the back of my head, I was like, am I really going to like this? Like this is about spelling. Like most people... Most people don't spell words for fun. Most people, you know, don't really enjoy, like, I'm, I'm sure, like, parents will go to watch their kids, but I would think that a lot of people don't necessarily, like, really enjoy watching a spelling bee the way they would enjoy, like, watching a sports game or, or watching a concert or, you know, whatever else people like to do to, for entertainment. But this movie taught me that it's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. That's what really spoke to me. And this 11 year old girl in the movie, Akila, is so passionate about what she does that I was like, shoot, like maybe I should spell more. Maybe I should get more into spelling. This is actually really interesting and really cool because like, you know what I'm saying? Like seeing an 11 year old girl just dig into something like that is so cool. You know, it, it is unique too. whenever you see someone, you know, get into something that's really unique. It can be really inspiring because it's not easy to do something that's going to set you apart. And so that was one of the coolest parts about this movie. So basically, this girl grows up um, going to Crenshaw Middle School, I believe it was called in L.A. It's kind of a rougher neighborhood. Um, and, you know, you can say all the things you want to say about the school system. The school system's not organized. It's not, you know, having the right resources for the kids, all these different things. Um, but in spite of all of that, she has a knack for spelling and her principal sees this. And then this man named Dr. Larrabee, who is a champion speller himself, sees this and sees this potential. Um, she does this inaugural spelling bee at her school. And basically, she's kind of told she has to do it because at first she's really resistant. She um, has a lot of truancy happening with her classes. And so she's been, you know, getting in trouble with her mom. She's been raised by a single mom and she's been getting in trouble for not going to class as much, even though she's really smart. And so I forget it was if it was her teacher or her principal, I'm going off of memory, maybe both of them that said, hey, you have to do this spelling bee. Otherwise, you're going to do like detention for the summer. Um, and so she does it and she does really well. But then there's these girls in the back of the room that are making fun of her and heckling her the whole time. And at the very end, Dr. Larrabee asks her to spell a word that's incredibly difficult. I don't even know how to say it or spell it. I think it was prestidigitation. Um, and she spells it like bam. That's in the trailer, too. Um, that was like one of those big moments in the movie. And she spells it like this is easy, guys. Um, and even and that was a cool moment for her. You could see right after she spells it, she's like proud of herself and it's really epic. But then the people start heckling her again, her friends, her classmates, whoever start heckling her again. And she runs away as fast as she can. And she says, I don't want to do this anymore. And so after that. Dr. Larrabee says that he wants to coach her. And at first he rejects her because she comes in being rude. But then later on, she comes back and says, hey, I actually really want to do this and I really need your help. And so he becomes like a like a mentor, kind of a father figure for her. As I said, she has a single single mom. Dad's not around anymore. Um, but so, yeah, that's that's a lot of the storyline. Right. Um, so there's a lot of things I could say. But I think one of the things I noticed the most in this movie, besides her perseverance and just her you know, her dedication to something at such a young age, because a lot of kids don't possess that type of dedication that young, that that really stood out, out to me. I really love the relationship aspect of this film. Um, there's a lot of really cool relationships that come up. So after she does this inaugural spelling bee at her school, she goes to, I believe it was, it would be the district B was the next thing that she goes to. And she meets this young guy named Javier and he immediately sees her. He can tell that she, he can tell that she's new and he like takes her under his wing and he's just like showing her the ropes and just being really kind to her. Um, 
And I, I actually worked with kids for a while. I just stopped a couple weeks ago. But for a couple years, I was with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and I remember one of my favorite things working with youth was seeing them be kind to each other. You know, if somebody took someone else's toy and that other person's really mad, but then you see that person forgive them. They say, I'm sorry. They say, I forgive you. And they hug. And then they just go back to playing and their friends again. Um, or like same kind of situation, having a new kid come in class and seeing one of my, um, one of my students come up to them and say, hi, how are you? This is my name. You know, it's that that's one of my favorite things with kids is that they have these pure hearts. You know, they haven't, unfortunately, a lot of kids have gone through things, especially at this job. I've seen a lot of kids at five years old that had been through more than most 80 year olds I know in my life, you know, like been through a lot, but still in spite of all that, they're pure. And that's another thing I see in this movie is that Akila is so pure. She just wants to spell. She just wants to be the best that she can be and make a name for her family. Um, and it's just really, really cool to see because like if we pour into youth, they're going to pour right back. Um, and as the movie goes on, so um, I don't, I, okay, if you're listening to my review, I might give away parts of it. And so, sorry, just know that I'm about to give away part. But there comes a part um, in the movie where Dr. Larrabee actually says he doesn't want to work with Akila anymore and that he doesn't want to be her coach anymore. Um, and Akila doesn't really know why, but she eventually figures out it's because he used to have a daughter kind of close to her age. Um, and that daughter passed away from some kind of illness when she was young. Um, and so he's having trouble getting, you know, not getting close to her in a weird way, but getting, you know, getting close, helping her and mentoring her, right? He's having trouble doing that because it's reminding him of his, of his, um, late daughter. Um, and so after when that happens, um, Akilah gets really frustrated because she knows that she wants to keep doing it, but she doesn't feel like she has the help that she needs. Um, and her mom says, Hey, you have about 50,000 teachers in this community. And so the movie goes on to show her going around and asking for help from a lot of different people and them just totally, you know, taking it in and totally taking her under their wing. You know, her brothers, her sister, her neighbors, um, I think sometimes even her classmates. She's just going around asking anybody that she can for help with spelling words. And it's really cool to see all these people come out and support her. Because again, as human beings, we tend to focus on the things that divide us instead of the things that can bring us together. And that's what I loved about this movie. There was so much unity in this girl, right? Like, you will see in the film all these different instances where, you know, there's a couple different times they show this coffee shop in town and there's these people that all gather to watch the spelling bee. You'll see black, you'll see white, you'll see Hispanic, you'll see old, you'll see young. They're all just gathered at the table drinking their coffee, eyes glued to the screen like we really hope this girl wins because they're coming up from a community where, you know, a lot of people haven't been in the newspaper. A lot of people haven't had these kind of successes and they see this young girl going for it and making such a positive difference. And I just, I, I just love that. I think that's incredible. If, if an 11 year old girl can do it, absolutely anybody can do it. And so that, that really spoke to me how she was bringing people together. Right. Because again, like a lot of people, I'm not a big sports fan. I, I do a lot of music. I do a lot of art stuff. I like playing sports. But surprisingly, I don't really like watching football that much. I don't like watching baseball that much. I'll go to a game if someone asks me. But I don't gather with people to watch sports. But my brother is a huge fan of sports. And I always ask him, like, what is it that you like so much about it? Like, obviously, you're into the sport. But, like, you know, you invite all your friends to go with you. Like, what is it that you – what else do you like about it? And he's like – I feel like when I go, I'm, we're from Chicago. He's like, when I go to a Cubs game, you know, I can just talk to the person next to me. I can high five the person next to me when, when there's a home run, right? Yeah. <laughs> I almost said touchdown. When there's a home run, I can hug the person next to me and something good happens. We can all scream and, and laugh and just smile. You know, like there are things in life that just bring people together. Concerts are similar. Whenever I go to a concert, I feel like I... I dance and I laugh and I, I, I make a lot of friends, you know? And so this is a similar thing where people all see the magic in this girl and they rally around her and it ends up bringing them closer together too. So there's just a world of good in this girl. Um, and it's just, it's incredible. 
Um, so yeah, that's like most of my thoughts about it. Um, I think I also want to talk for a second about a little bit even more about Aquila. Again, there were so many good characters in this movie. Javier, her friend, sweetheart, really did a lot for her. Um, her mom really comes around at first. Her mom's not that supportive, but then she sees what a talent Aquila has and and how much it's blessing her life. And she totally turns the other cheek and is completely supportive and helpful with it. Um, her siblings, a lot of good people, Dr. Larry. But Aquila really is the standout in this movie. Um, you know, there's really not a lot to not like about her. And, you know, she starts off and you see some things about her. You see that she's skipping class. You see that she's going along with the crowd a little bit. You see that she's afraid. But it's how she overcomes all of this that is the essence of this film. Um one of the quotes that she actually, Dr. Larrabee has her read, that is a quote that I think every human being needs to read, is, um, I believe, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it right now just so I quote it perfectly. It's by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. They don't say that second part in the movie. I wish they did, but it's okay. <laughs> we know that it's there. Um, but even that first part, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Yes, because God gives us the authority to walk in that, to walk in his power, right? He gives us the, the sound mind, the spirit of love and power and authority. That's what he gives us, right? Um, and so she is walking in that in every way. And so... Yeah, just seeing her really chase this and not letting anything get in the way. Because, again, there are a lot of obstacles. You know, there was, um, let me see what I remember. There was, there was like, four different Bs. There was the inaugural one. There was the district. There was the state. And then, of course, she makes it to the national. And spoiler alert, her and um, the, the two-time champion, Dylan, her, like, competitor, her number one competitor, they both win. Um, but so, train of thought, train of thought. Um, basically you guys at the very end, she, so actually, or let me, let me scooch back for a second. So when she is on her way to the national spelling bee, when she is doing the, uh, the district and the state bees before she goes to the national, um, she has some interactions with this Dylan character. So this Dylan character is incredibly smart, but his parents are incredibly strict, really expect the best from him constantly and put him under a lot of pressure to make sure that he wins this bee. And so he's kind of rude to her. Um, she goes to another school, um, not Crenshaw. She goes to, I think it was called Woodland or something. She goes to the school to participate in their spelling club. Javier is there. Some other people are there. Um, and she runs into Dylan and Dylan gives her a word to spell. That's pretty hard. And she doesn't spell it right. And he, he kind of judges her and he says, wow, I don't think you should be doing this. If you can't spell that word, like you better work on this. You better get a coach. He actually says something helpful. That's when he tells her she needs to get a coach. I've heard a really good quote that said, people will tell you the truth when they're angry or when they really love you. So he is probably angry that she was there. And so he told her the truth and that actually really helped her. But anyway, so he was rude to her. There's other interactions in the movie where he and his parents, uh, at one point, one of his parents calls her, he says, oh, you're going to lose to that little black girl. And he's just flat out racist and, and evil in that moment. Um, and so she's overcoming that. She's overcoming all those other interactions. And then at the, towards the end of the movie, when they're at the National Bee, it ends up being her and Dylan. Dylan's won twice. His father says, this is your last year. You have to win again. Akila sees that. Akila is given the word that Dylan gave her when they first met that she got wrong. She studied the heck out of that word and she knows how to spell it now. She goes up there and intentionally misspells the word. Dylan catches on. He's upset with his dad. His heart starts to turn because he sees what Akila did and the sacrifice she made for him, for someone that doesn't even deserve it. He misspells the word too. And then those two go at it. They go at it in a nice, friendly, competitive way, but they go at it. And eventually, they both win. And that was such a cool ending. You don't see that very much. This is a really special movie because it, it shows the love of Christ. 
you know, they don't really mention God in the movie, but man, like this whole idea of, you know, treat your enemy well. Like Dylan was terrible to her, but she loved on him. And then she ended up having the victory and he had it too. Did he deserve it? Probably not. But man, like I'm not, I'm not mad at that because like he needed God too, even though he was, his heart was in a bad place. Like they're both still just kids too. I'm always going to have compassion on kids. Even the kids I would work with, that would be so rude or so this or that. It's like, all right, you got time to fix this and you might not even fully realize what you're doing, you know? Um, so the ending was just really, really cool. Um, it's, it's really noble when someone, yeah, loves on their enemy when someone looks at someone with love in their eyes when it might be almost impossible to do that to someone that's hurt you, especially when it's deliberate. But Akila is a boss in every way, man, in absolutely every way. I love Kiki Palmer too. I grew up in the late 90s and early 2000s and I loved watching her on Disney Channel. And just a quick little backstory about her and her audition process and whatnot. Um, she had to audition five different times and apparently they auditioned over 300 different girls they were in new york la and i think one other place um and they finally settled on her and atchison the screenwriter director guy said that what he loved the most about her was that he didn't want someone he was going to have to command he wanted someone that he's going to be able to have a collaboration with that would just kind of naturally bring the character to life and so it sounds like kiki really took this role and she, you know, she read the lines, she did the thing, but she really made it her own. And she really interpreted it in a way that really speaks to people and that really brought this story to life. And I'm, it, it's so cool to see that, you know. Um, I haven't really kept up with her, but, you know, from what I last heard about her, she seems like a, like a decent person and a very good actress. And hopefully she's given glory to God. I don't really know too much about her, but from that film, I was really impressed and really touched. And so, yeah, this was so incredibly long, but I, like I said, I I really was touched by this film. I'm really passionate about it. I would encourage anyone that hasn't seen it to see it. Last time I checked, it was on YouTube for free. So you really have no excuse. Um, but also if you can't spare two bucks, then come on, maybe you can cut down somewhere else to watch this incredible film. Or watch it again. If you, you probably, a lot of people probably haven't seen this movie in a while. If you have seen it. So I encourage you just to watch it again and just be open to whatever newness you can, you can gather from it, whatever inspiration you can gather. So yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning into this. Um, you know, if you have other movies you want me to review, um, movies are a little tougher because then you have to watch the whole two hour thing and carve out the time. And if it's a movie that maybe like I don't like, or I don't really want to watch, then whatever. But you know, you guys just tell me what you want to see and I'll see what I can do. Um, and don't forget my single shaggy head comes out next Friday. I shouldn't say next Friday because I'm going to post this tomorrow or the next day. My single comes out August 18th. So if you're watching this, on August 18th, go check it out. <laughs> if it's before August 18th, go pre-save the link um, I will put in the description box. Thank you guys so much. God bless. And I will see you in the next one.